Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellett from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gurdon from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 137, percentage of each month. All right, so today's question came in from YouTube. We're trying to figure out how much we pay Joe for each month. Joe, uh, $1,500 a month. He started on April or May 14th. Uh, left on September 9th, all right, so some sort of a temporary employee. Uh, and the way that it was explained to me is we pay him the full month for June, July, August. For September, though, we pay him 9 thirtieths of the month. And for May, uh, we subtract 31 minus 13, figure out how many days of work, divided by 31 uh, times 1,500 is how they calculate this. All right, so a few things are relatively straightforward. We have the months over here, equal date value of that month name, ampersand, in quotes, space, 1, comma, 2013, which gives us the start of the month. I had to format that as a date. Uh, equal EO month gives me the end of the month of C5, comma, 0, so it goes 0 months out, and that gets me the end of the month. And then number of days in the month is D5 minus C5 plus 1. Simple enough, right? Here's where the duel comes in. And we're trying to figure out, Mike, how we can figure out the number of days in this month that intersect with this period here. And so I think what we're going to do is we're going to take the equal min of this date, the end date, comma, uh, this ending date for the person. We'll press F4 to lock that down. And then subtract the max of this date, the start date of the month, comma, the start date for the person, F4, comma, and in many cases, this is going to end up being negative. All right, so we'll copy it down. But for the months that the person actually worked, right there, uh, it works, except it's off by one. So we need to add one to that whole thing. There we go. All right, now we need to get rid of the negatives. So anytime you want to get rid of the negatives, we take the max of zero, comma, and the rest of the formula. And I think I now have the number of days that this person worked. So for June, July, and August, uh, they're getting 100% to 1,500. For September, 9 divided by 30, they're getting 450. And for May, they worked 18 out of the 31 months, so they're getting 870. That's the total. The big question, is there a simpler way to do this? Now, my first thought is let's just treat it as a year. So equal this 1,500 times 12. What percentage of the year was he around? Well, he was around for this many days, the end date minus the start date, plus 1. And then we'll divide that by 365. So his pay for that whole period is not the same as the way they're calculating. All right, so Mike, let's see. I, I read in your book, Control-Shift-Enter, that array formulas can take a big, huge set of formulas like this and replace it with a single formula. That's the goal, because in reality, I'm sure this company has more than just Joe. They would love to have Joe on this line and an answer right here, or maybe the month's going across. I don't know, um, but they want to be able to do this for more records, and we don't want to have to have, uh, what, um, you know, 13 rows times six, uh, 100 formulas just to figure out the pay amount. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Oh, wait a second. No, uh, no thanks. Uh, I have no good solution to this. Um, the best thing you can do is just go rewrite all the employees' contracts and say, hey, look, we're not going to do it individually by month. We're going to take, as Mr. Excel did, the yearly amount, figure out how many days there are with this subtract, this sub calculation right here, divided by 365, and just calculate it that way. So redo all the contracts. Or number two, you can go uh, post at the Mr. Excel message board and get Barry Houdini to do one of his magical date formulas. I mean, I've seen him do some stuff. I look at it and I go, I, and I work my way through it and I cannot get it. It's just amazing what he could do. Uh, or uh, you can do what I'm going to do and make a formula that is way too long. All right, I see this as three possibilities, right? We could have an end and beginning date in the same month. We could have a begin and ending date with just two months or more than two months. So I'm going to kind of try and build this in different pieces. Well, if it's just this, I'm going to first calculate the percentage 
that this person has worked for this situation, this situation, and this situation. That will give us three formulas, different formulas, and we'll use the choose function to look up one of those three formulas. So the first one is, hey, I'm going to say, if it's just both end and start in the same month, I'm going to say, hey, end minus begin plus 1. And then I need to divide it. I need a formula element that can figure out the number of days in this month. Total day, so I'm going to say day. That gives me 1 through 31 or 1 through 28. And then I'm going to go end of month. So I'm going to say, hey, give me the end. And it doesn't matter because they're both the same. The end of this, comma, 0 says the end of this month. Now, if I were to evaluate this end of month right here, F9, you can see, it. well, it's a serial number, right? But the day will see it, F9, and it will give me 31. And that's dynamic. Whatever month it is, it'll give us the correct bit. All right, so that little bit right there. And Control-Shift tilde, or grave accent, that's the keyboard to wipe away any number formatting. It's being sucked from here. So Control-Shift tilde, or grave accent, that gives us general number format. Now, if we have two months, I'm going to have to do two pieces. I'm going to have to, have to figure out how many days in this month divided by the total. Same there. So I'm going to say equals. Well, I need to get the end of the month of this. So I'm going to say end of the month of that date right there, comma, 0. That will give me the end of the month, minus this right here. That will be one day too few. So let's add 1 back in. All right, so that give me the number of the days. And we'll do our same little bit, day, end of month of this. That's because we're doing just that little bit there. And if I enter this right here, comma, 0, if I enter this right here, this just gives me just the percentage that was worked in that month right there, right? So I need to add to that. And we're going to have to do a slightly different calculation here, because here we want to take the actual date minus the last day from the previous month. So I'm going to say whoop, minus an end of month. But instead of saying 0 for this month, I'm going to say minus 1 for last month. That'll give me the exact that'll give me the number of days, which is nine, right? And then divide by that same little bit, day end of month of this, comma zero, close parentheses, close parentheses. I hope I got it all right there. Yeah, and then close parentheses. I actually might have one too many parentheses. Control shift tilde. I don't have the right parentheses. It should be right there. That was way too many days, all right? So that is the percentage of a month. And by the way, we can get any percentage here if, it, if it's multiple months. Uh, like we're going to get down here, you can get a percentage bigger than 100, right? So now this one, well, it's going to be similar to this format. By the way, I'm staggering it like this because then I'm going to have to do something crazy at the end. Oh, man, this is going to be crazy. I'm going to highlight this, delete this, and put this right here. All right, so that gives me this. I just need to do what? Well, this situation is two months, but this is greater than. Well, we only need to calculate the partial for this May and then the ninth month here. But the months in between are 100%. So I need to add the number 1 for each additional month. So I'm going to say plus, and then month of the later month. That will give me 9 minus month of this. That will give me 5. And I have to subtract 1. That will give me 9 minus 5 is 4, minus 1 is 3. That's the extra months we need to add. And actually, I'm going to use this little thing again. So those are the three different pieces. Now, because I'm going to mash them all together right here, I'm actually going to copy this up. I, I actually built these two here with the date scenario because it was easier to build and look at and think about. But now we need to mash them all up into one cell here. So I'm going to copy these up. And I'm going to use, see, they're all looking at the same cell references. Now I'm going to mash those together. But here's the problem, one, two, three different formulas. The choose, if it's going to choose between three formulas, needs the number one, two, three. I'm going to say, how about that? That gives me, th whoops. That's looking at the wrong one. I copied it. Uh, so if I go like this, broop, that gives me minus 1. I'm not going to need that. 
So 0, this will give me 2, and this will give me something like 4. But guess what? I need 1, 2, 3. The choose needs a 1, so now I'm going to add 1. But this will give me 1, 2, 5. And I only need 1, 2, 3. So anything 3 or above has to convert to a 3. So I'm going to put this inside of lookup. Remember, lookup is a like VLOOKUP, but it only does approximate match. So this will give me that lookup value. Give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever it is, comma. So whoops, control Z, comma. So that'll give me the value to look up. And then the lookup vector is going to be in array syntax, curly bracket 1, 2, 3, and curly bracket. It's doing approximate match. So when it gets a bigger one, it's going to take the 3. So that will give me the 1, 2, 3. That's going to sit inside of choose and determine which one of these formulas to run to get our percentage, total percentage. I'm going to copy Control CC, open the clipboard, and then get this one, Control C, and then this one, Control C. I'm going to come over here, put that lookup inside of choose. I told you this was the most ridiculous thing ever. There's the index. And then we're going to go. Value 1, that formula, comma, value 2, that formula, comma, value 3, that formula. So we're looking up one of three formulas. Control Enter, and that just gives me the percentages. Oh, man, now we need to take the amount and times. And this is not an array formula. This is just a really, really ridiculously long formula, a non-Barry Houdini-like formula. All right, and I, I think uh, maybe that's working. Now, if uh, there's not some better solutions posted in the comment sections, uh, then uh, I, I guess we're not paying attention because there's got to be something better than that. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, hey, Mike. All right, I got to tell you, I'm relieved. I When I sent this off to you, I figured you were going to take the row of the indirect or the start date, colon, end date, take the month of that, get a unique list of months, count how many times each month occurred, Divide by a lookup table of the number of days in each month, take those percentages times the salary, all wrapped in a sum or some product, and the thing was going to be 10,000 characters. So actually what you sent is a lot shorter than what I thought uh, you would get. Uh, great way to go. It will be interesting to see in the YouTube comments if someone has something better. Uh, so I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.